Welcome to Paley Front Row, part of the Paley at Home series presented by City. Big ideas often start small. When the global payments and software company Flywire wanted to get from here to there, they needed a global bank like City. With local teams in 95 countries, City was able to help Flywire grow and expand into businesses like education, healthcare, travel, and B2B worldwide. In turn, inspiring the next generation of ideas for the love of moving businesses forward, for the love of progress, City. Can you hear me? Good evening. good evening. You know, I'm Chanel Jones from the Today Show. I'm so used to saying good morning. In fact, I said good morning at 7 o'clock this morning. So now I feel like a big girl because I can say <laughs> I'm like up past, you know, with the kids. So good evening. good evening. There we go. They told me specifically where to sit. And now I can't remember. Am I here or all the way down on the other end? OK, I'm in the right spot. I don't want to waste any time. Did you enjoy the first episode? <laughs> Don't you, don't you want to rush home so you can watch more? I just told Shonda, I realized, I'm like, wait, today's the day. So on the way here, I pulled up Netflix on my phone so I could watch on the way here. I'm on six. <laughs> Let me just tell you, it gets better and better and better. So I don't want to waste any time. I want to bring in the cast. We're going to have a phenomenal conversation. So I'm going to say their names, and I want you to give them a round of applause because they have created a masterpiece. So first, we have director and executive producer Tom Verica. <laughs> We have executive producer Betsy Beers. And now, let's meet our stars. You are going to fall in love with them. We have Arsima Thomas, who plays young lady Agatha Danbury. Isn't it fun to see him in person after you've seen them all? <laughs> Go ahead, y'all can stare at her. Isn't she beautiful? Okay, okay. And next we have Listen to me, rock star, Corey Milcrease, who yeah. plays yeah. 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 Go ahead, you can stare at him too. Isn't he dashing? I'm gonna make him red. All right, next we have red. India Armatifio, who plays <laughs> Young Queen Scarlet. Isn't this fun already? I'm looking at your faces and you guys are like. <laughs> Next, we have Golda Rushevel, who plays the yeah. 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 Why did you do that? Yes, yes, yes. And last, but certainly not least, mm. we have the woman behind this masterpiece. Give it up for us, Shonda Rhimes. All right, shall we dance? Yes. yes. All right, all right. Okay, first of all, congratulations to all of you. I know this has been, you guys have put in so much work, it is evident, so clear. But now the moment is here. And so Shonda, I'm gonna start with you. You've worked so hard, so long. You've been out promoting it. Um, and now the moment is here where we can all see it. How does it feel? Are you excited? Are you anxious? All of the above? I was completely calm until today <laughs> it was out. And then I got really nervous, but I'm still excited. That everybody does this reaction it. make you feel better? This reaction is amazing. <laughs> Especially because they're not just anticipating it, they've seen it now. Right, now they've seen it and now they've really seen it. like take it in. And they're ready for me to quit talking so they can go home and watch <laughs> the rest. So Bridgerton is, is such a beloved series. Talk to us quickly about what inspired you to expand uh, upon the universe and tell Queen Charlotte's origin story. You know, Golda plays Queen Charlotte in Bridgerton, obviously. And her performance to me was so amazing and layered and interesting. And even though we didn't know that much about her, yeah. But even though we didn't know that much about the queen, you felt like there were so many layers there. Like I kept being like, why aren't we going home with her? Like she's very interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was exciting to really delve in um, to this character. I kept calling her the Beyonce of Bridgerton, mm -hmm. um, right? 
And then Ted Sarandos, who runs Netflix, called me and told him, him told me that his mother-in-law told him that he should be making a series about Queen Charlotte, and he wanted to know if I would make one, and wow. I was like, absolutely. <laughs> wow. wow, that's amazing. Betsy, let me bring you in here. You're an executive producer. How would you describe the tone of Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story? I mean, is it different from the tone and the mood that fans know and love from the other seasons, or is this different, or how, how would you explain it? You know, I think it obviously has roots in Bridgerton, and there is there's the fun and the joy and, you know, the sexiness <clears throat> of Bridgerton, <laughs> and maybe even more. Um, but, I, but I also think that there's a, there's a gravitas to this. There's a, a real feeling of getting to know a much smaller group of characters and watching them go through this incredible process throughout these six episodes. It's, it's a hard, kind of thing to describe in a word, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's its own show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's I, connected, but it's definitively its own show. Mm -hmm. And Tom, let me bring you in here. You direct and you also, you're also an executive producer on the series. Let me just say, and you guys will see as, as you continue to watch, it's so, so good. It's like watching pieces of a puzzle, um, you know, kind of fall into place, creating this picture of who these characters are, why they are the way they are, um, and it's shot um, across two timelines. So there are times where we see the younger Queen Charlotte um, as she's starting to find her way. And then we also see Golda as, you know, Queen Charlotte, who we've known. Can you talk about capturing two visually, uh, you know, distinct stories, especially as a veteran of the Bridgerton world? Did you have to make them two distinct worlds? Yeah, we, we, <clears throat> we had discussions about how we wanted to illustrate visually what the difference between these two worlds are. Uh, and it was... A lot of boring things like uh, camera, you know, we use zoom lenses for the present day and, and primes for the, it's, it's, it's a lot of technical stuff, but it was very subtle differences that make mm. uh, the subtle changes that, that distinguish the differences between these two periods. Uh, filters as well, there was the summer period, there was a warmer, warmer glow to the past and the uh, forward, present day, was a little bit cooler. It was, a, it was kind of this world, the Bridgerton world is usually in the warm summer months, but this is the mm. cooler period. So we had a lot of fires. There was a cooler blue to a lot of the stuff that Golda got to wear a little bit heavier. Not that she needed anything heavier. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but Which she... we are going to talk about, by the way. <laughs> you guys are so lucky because now when you watch it, you can think of some of those things that he's saying, whereas now I want to go back and, and see that. So with that said, Golda, let me bring you in here. Queen Charlotte is undoubtedly, clearly, a character uh, fan favorite here. Can you describe the moment when Shonda talk to you about, hey, let's, let's expand um, this universe here, your character's origin story. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a pinch me moment, definitely, and one that's very surreal, um, one that's very humbling, but also I wanted to be present in it and really kind of celebrate the work that we all had done on the show that so far, you know. Um, I knew that Queen Charlotte was, you know, a fan favorite, and that's, the intimate scenes with George, and I've spoken about this, is, are always the scenes that fans talk to me about mm. in Bridgerton. You know, those are the ones that move them about the Queen. So Why do you think that is? I don't know. I, well, I think it's, you know, she's very glitz and glamour. You know, it's, it's the balls, it's the tea parties. And then there are these moments where humanity pops through, you know, and we see this powerful, strong black woman mm -hmm. be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's really relatable to people. So now to be able to do a deeper dive, you know, uh, through India's performance, um, I think is, yeah, it's, 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 it's wonderful. It's so wonderful. <laughs> India, I see you and I'm thinking, okay, how do I get from, how do we get from the way mm. you are to the way she is? We're all so looking forward to seeing that, that arc. Um, so let me bring in India, Corey, and Arsima. Um, how did you each, first of all, how did you find out about the project? Did you watch Bridgerton before? And then what was that like when you found out, hey, it's happening, you're in? I had seen Bridgerton before. Um, which made the audition process terrifying because I knew how important it was going to be mm -hmm. um, and also what big shoes to fill. Um, following off Golda's um, kind of creation of Charlotte. Um, but it was, I think I speak for us three, it was a lengthy five month audition process. Was various, it five months? Yeah, mm -hmm. various different um, meetings and um, scenes from um, season one and um, chemistry tests with um, these two. 
Um, there is was... chemistry, let me just add that. Where? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Um, yeah, but it was, um, it also felt really weird because Tom and Betsy and the team and Chonda were in America and we're based in London. So it, nothing felt real until kind of we did the costume fittings and I finally, you know, finally realized, okay, I'm actually doing something that's tangible. Um, that was my experience. What about for you, Corey? When did it feel real? Um, tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't quite... It doesn't feel real, really. We were just talking backstage. It's, yeah. It still feels incredibly surreal. Um, but it's been a, 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 a truly wonderful, wonderful ride. And, um, you know, I'm very grateful to have worked with everyone uh, on and off this panel um, and, and on such a, a beautiful character and in such a beautiful love story and in such a beautiful um, project. It is beautiful in so many yeah. ways. Arsema, let me bring you in here. Mm. Talk to me. So this is your first big mm. role. Yes. Yeah. How was this process? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's two. It's two. Oh, it's two. It's Corey as Cor well. And Corey too. Yeah. Corey yeah. Too. yeah. I'm not letting you get off of this. I mean, y'all started, I mean, goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> we peaked too soon. Right, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck. And what would you say the casting process was like for you? Um, I mean, it, it, like it was kind of a mix of the, their two stories. You know, I, I hadn't watched Bridgerton prior, but I was... Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I know. It I, happened. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely scandalous. Okay. Um, uh, but I, my mother and sister were massive fans. Yeah. And I would always hear the classical music going through the house. And I was like, I don't know. There was something in me that I just, I couldn't watch it. I don't know if it was like this inner voice being like, just wait. Yeah, I think just, you, you mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, but then... Um, I did the self-tape, and as actors, when you do a self-tape, you kind of just send it off into the What does void. that mean? Do you just say, hi, my name is, like, what does that or mean? No, no. You, so you get, like, a, a side uh, audition a little scene, um, and then you kind of just tape it in front of your, with your friend, uh, wow. and <laughs> on your phone, and you email it to your agent, and you hope you get any type of response back. Wow. Um, and I remember the audition was from Bridgerton season one, it was Penelope Featherington and Colin Bridgerton, and it was such a short scene. I was like, oh, this, nothing is gonna happen. It was like, a drink is poured on her, and she's like, what? And I was like, <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Uh, and I was so grateful because I was like, thank God I don't know the context of this, because oh, that's I would have- true. Yeah, I would have totally, I know myself, I tend to end game. I would have put in what I thought they wanted. Mm. Um, and then I remember the Zoom call with yeah. all of you guys. Yeah. And it was when Betsy said, if Star Wars comes knocking, <laughs> just tell them no. And I was like, okay, now I really need to watch this. I did actually yeah. say that. Is that really I, what you said? Yeah, no, and I think I probably tipped her off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was just, I was. You got the I, was, I wanted to. <laughs> oh. No, I, I, we, we sort of all looked at each other and I thought, I just better make sure that. She doesn't I go anywhere. Hand and she doesn't we didn't go know anywhere. when we were going to start. What was it about these, these young actors that you said, you know what, this, this, is, this is our crew? Tom answer. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it really, when you're doing a Shonda Rhimes show, it gives you the permission to hire actors who you can escape into as opposed to getting a star mm -hmm. who needs mm -hmm. to sell the project. Mm -hmm. So I think the material yeah. was... Uh, give them a chance. Yeah. I think we, we kind of know, we, uh, we kind of have a camp that we know what we have, and mm -hmm. it really gave us that permission to find these brilliant actors straight out of school, uh, some of them. Yeah. Uh, and really, I mean, there is, a, there is a chance you take, but I think we, we put them through the mill. Uh, Betsy and I asked we, a lot of questions. We absolutely did. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah. a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was something, I think, for all of us, that as soon as we, as soon as we saw these three, it was yeah. four, three. Yeah. We knew you. Yeah. Gold, was, <laughs> Gold was already in. We already knew we loved you. Yeah. Um, but I, it was like, it's this amazingly magic moment. One of the great things about having worked together for so long mm -hmm. is we tend to sort of be all on the same page yeah. in terms of what would bring the magic to the words and to your words. And this was not a hard decision. No, this at was, all. Mm -hmm. this, was, um, this was one of the actually most delightfully easiest mm -hmm. And by the way, it's a great job. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, watch yeah. the other side. So there are so many powerful themes, as you probably already know, um, in this series that emerge. And um, the self-discovery, the empowerment, uh, discovering who you are as a woman, I connected with that, and your place in society, friendship, trust, not to mention the costumes, the, the wigs that give me life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when we see, I told Shauna, when we see young Charlotte come in with that afro, yeah. I'm like, I told her, it was like I was at church, like talking back to the screen, watching the excitement. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So let's dig into some of that. So let's start with friendship, Shonda. Um, this new series that delves into the friendship that we currently see in Bridgerton, um, among Queen Charlotte, Lady Danbury, Violet Bridgerton. Uh, these women reveal themselves, and as you'll see, they make themselves vulnerable uh, with each other. Can you talk about that theme of sisterhood that, that develops here? I really wanted to show both in the, I, we call Bridgerton present day, but both in the present day, and in the Queen Charlotte era, that the young Queen Charlotte era, that we were showing how women relate to one another and forming these bonds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to me, it's powerful, and it's also very natural to me that women would be, befriend one another and take care of one another. I don't really know any other world, and so for me, I wanted to show that. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a special thing that's going on there because you know Violet has her own story going on, which I think is very interesting, which you'll see. And watching them all come together was wonderful. Mm. So Arsma, she mentioned Violet. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're filling the shoes as young Lady Danbury, who, and she's already an established character. So I'm curious how you do that. Like, do you guys work together, or do you try to see that role and make your own version of it? You know what I mean? How do you be a younger version of someone who's established? You know, I uh, was asking my question that I, I was asking myself that question um, until I got the script. Mm. And then I realized that I don't need to be her because she wasn't that at this age, ah, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like there's a lot of stuff that it takes to get there. Oh no, you can clap. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But yeah, there's, there's something amazing about seeing a woman become strong mm. rather than just assuming that she's been that her entire life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. India, did you feel the same way or how, how was your experience of, you know, like I said, this is the younger version, but how do you find out who you're going to be in that role? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, as Arsema has very beautifully said, you are not the same person you are uh, next week, yeah. um, let alone, you know, decades and decades of, of experience. And for Charlotte, it's decades of monotonous routine mm. and the same, you know, yeah, it's regimented. And I think when that becomes your everyday and it becomes, it's, it's just your system. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, her, her early stages and her formative years, when we see her in, in, in this show, are the, the clunking and the, it's the early, um, yeah, it's, it's finding that navigate, it's navigating how, yeah, how, how to get there. Mm. Um, but yeah, Shonda and, and Tom kind of very plainly said, we don't want you to emulate Golda, which I was like, phew, because I can't do that anyway. <laughs> um, but we had conversations quite early on, um, just about your understanding of where you thought she was prior to getting scripts, because mm. these scripts weren't available when you, Bridgerton, and then it was very similar to um, the script anyway. So um, yeah, it's good to get a through line, but it was very much kind of my own undertaking. Mm. Golda, can we talk about those wigs for a moment? Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did you ever just look in the mirror when everything was all said and done and just be like, mm. <laughs> like, did you have a moment to really be able to, I mean, they were phenomenal and were they heavy? Yes, they are heavy. Um, yes, they are heavy. <laughs> uh, like, like how heavy? Like a, a very, flower. very, very, very heavy. <laughs> um, I, I actually, Tom and the crew very kindly made me a neck brace. Yes. Are you serious? Yes. Yes, well, I'm very, very serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like a, a, a five. This is a very serious face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and I will release the photo. There's several photos of me in wow. said neck brace, but I just have to doctor it a little bit because I'm wearing nothing underneath. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, Tom very kindly and the, and the crew made me a neck brace. So um, not all the time, 
but some of the time I, I did have to use it. Wow, I read, I read that you wore 15 wigs this season. Oh. Each wig took about 10 full days to craft. Yes, I, yeah, a week to, yeah, yeah. Two, so then when weeks. you put them on and when you put on the wardrobe, do you become? Charlotte is definitely created, yes. I wondered about that. Yeah, Talk she, to me about she, that. Um, it, well, it takes, the journey is about two and a half hours from start to finish to create her and all the stuff and that includes like driving to set mm -hmm. because the costume and the wig are, just, are too big to get changed in the trailer like, like everybody else does so there is a point where i have to be driven to set in a van sometimes i have to sit on the floor of said van <laughs> because um, fit, no? the yes the wigs are too high um, and we have the pictures. Oh. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it's all very glamorous. Um, yes, and then I get out of said van and then into a kind of easy up tent yep. mm. where the costume is hanging and the wig get put on and the costume is the last thing and jewellery is the last thing to yeah, get put on. So it's, it's a whole journey. She doesn't yes. complain at all. And, and it's funny what you said when you put on, do, do you feel like, yeah, I got it. Gold has laser focus of like, I think, uh, timing out, okay, just serious focus. And then yeah. as soon as the camera rolls, she has that, that presence, that elegance. But I think it's managing what the, how uncomfortable and how yeah. long she's going to be in this. It, so I do a lot of meditation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like serious meditation of how she sits. And, mm. you know, there was long periods of time that yeah. we, we take um, to get the cameras all set up and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So there is a kind of peace and tranquility that one has to find mm -hmm. to be able to sustain a day's work in all of that stuff. I love that. <clears throat> Tom, I, you know, I want you guys to be able to leave with some little tidbits, maybe some things that you didn't know. And I learned that there's this homage to The Godfather, uh, part two of the <laughs> premiere episode. Is, really is that true? <laughs> uh, it, it's, we were kind of looking at uh, when we wanted to illustrate the difference between these two time periods. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at a number of different transitions and how we can go from uh, the, the present day period and then the Georgian period, which, which is the younger Charlotte. And um, because a lot of these scenes were we were cutting right to that character, we designed kind of where the, where the character would enter frame, how they would be moving to help with that transition so that when we morph into that uh, that other period so we looked at uh, we looked at a lot of different examples in Godfather Godfather 2 because there was a lot of going back in time oh, cool. there was a there was kind of a classic transition of a cross dissolve which is not used so much anymore but we thought perfectly for this uh, where we would have Golda on the right side of frame as she just come away came away from the funeral and mm -hmm. then you have India coming through the frame on the left side of frame and keeping them both as long as we can before it it hands off. It's beautiful. On it's like art. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> can I, can I say, please? Tom Verica directed every single episode of this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Really. Yeah. So yeah. good. So good. So, Corey, I want to bring you in here because you are amazing. And, I, you know, I watch you and I told them backstage, I would watch Corey and then I'd pause it and then go Google you know, to try to figure out like what really happened, what was wrong with the king, like, did he move that way? I mean, it was fascinating. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. And I also want to talk about your love story. So let me start with that. How would you describe King George and Queen Charlotte's relationship and the, the challenges that they face in the early stages of the story? <laughs> and go. And go. Um, I, I think uh, their love is one that is born in a moment of uh, sight. Uh, I think neither of them have really ever been seen, truly. Uh, Charlotte is the victim of systemic oppression and duty and responsibility that she, all, all three of which she wants to desperately get free from. George is a victim of domestic oppression from his family mm. and, uh, and the duty and responsibility that comes with the crown and, and all three of those he wants to break free from. And in that moment that you guys have all just seen, uh, George sees this woman that is breaking free so much from her chains that she's willing to climb over this wall. And I always think it's funny because I'm like, what, what is after that wall? What's your plan? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, like, um, and, uh, and so he sees this, this beautiful woman that's trying to escape in the, the most mad way. And, and she sees this guy who 
is so adamant that he's not your majesty, he's just George, he's mm -hmm. just this guy. And, uh, and they see each other as people mm -hmm. for the first time. And, mm -hmm. and I mean that not just in them, but it's the first time that George sees someone being themselves. Mm. First time Charlotte sees that, and it's the first time that they experience being seen as well. Mm. And I think in that moment, there's, there's, there's a, a lifetime of build-up of desperation for that exact feeling that just is released. Mm. And, um, and after that, I think George's uh, affliction and what he deals with, which is definitely explored more in the, in the show, that causes him intense uh, personal misery daily. Uh, and he's in really quite a lot of pain a lot of the time. And, uh, and that's, the, that's the main barrier to their relationship, is, is, is how their love can overcome that and how George can overcome that. There were so many layers to it. It's funny, when I was watching it, full disclosure, my husband walked in, he goes, oh, she's watching Bridgerton, you know, he knows. That's my, that's my me time. <laughs> and the scene where you were going over the wall, I was like, how come you're not that romantic with me? <laughs> I was like, you never talk to me like that. Um, so um, Tom and Corey, you know, one of the most touching and emotional parts um, of, of Queen Charlotte is seeing, as you were just alluding to, uh, King George's struggle. Mm. Would you mind shedding a light on that piece of the show, why it was important to showcase um, that side of his character? I mean, there were scenes where as a viewer you could feel his pain, you hear his pain. Um, talk to me about going there. Uh, I, that's, I, I get the script about, uh, about what's going through. So it's, it's the, the script is everything. So it becomes, a, it becomes an exploration with Corey. We've had discussions mm -hmm. kind of walking through that. How much is too much? Mm -hmm. What's predictable? What's stereotypical? So we kind of deconstructed exactly what was happening and experimented with that. So the first couple of times we were going, we were, I say we, but we were doing that, but mm. Corey kind of had, uh, I mean, kind of hit it right on. Mm. Uh, and we just kind of uh, played with levels of that and mm. uh, dialed it up and dialed it down a bit so we can see and, and be able to navigate what, if it felt too heavy handed or too affected. Mm. Um, but it was really the psychology behind that, given the history that we know about that character, but we really wanted to make it a, a personal journey in what is our story mm. uh, and what means a lot to Corey as an actor playing this part. Mm. So we did have discussions about yeah. that and you had uh, uh, just, it's, it's so great to work with actors who have a lot of ideas and, and smart ideas about how they want to go about it. But also vice versa, I think like George's struggle is definitely, is like definitely uh, Shonda, I mean, you, you wrote those things brilliantly and I, I, mean, I remember seeing drafts that you would uh, make from from things before, and, and I'd go, that's 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 Shonda's brilliance. That's just genius. And and then I think Tom, you know, it felt in the room like what what we turned George into is definitely 50-50 because as an actor, you have to go to places where you're not necessarily completely like you know because it's very emotional sometimes. It's very mm -hmm. vulnerable, and sometimes you need a guiding hand to say, how about this? How about that? You know. So like it felt like I was more like you know just sort of like wet paint, and then you were the mm -hmm. you're going you know you're doing. You know, you're, I don't know what this is, but... <laughs> yeah. I never did that. I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the musical number comes later. Um, but you, you, Exactly, yeah. But you, know, you know what I mean, though, and I, yeah. you know, I, I'm so grateful to, to both of these. Well, it's creating the environment and also, it's, you know, I'm, I, I, I truly do with each, each of you, and I've worked with each of you differently, is, mm. is to create that environment with the crew, with the scene, yeah. to they feel be, comfortable yeah, in that space. Yeah. Well, and you're an actor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What I've does it feel like <laughs> for you, Shonda? You, you know, you've written this. I always wonder, like, first of all, I'm like, how does she come up with these things? Mm -hmm. And like, what's in her head? Aren't you furious? <laughs> and all the other things that are in there. And so <laughs> what is it like then once you get it out on a sheet of paper and, you know, whatever the journey is, and then you see it on the screen? Like, what does that feel like? It's, I mean, to me, it's this wonderful blueprint. A script is a blueprint. It is not, it's not like writing a novel where everything is set. And I wondered about that. Final voice. For Corey's um, scenes where you really see him having trouble, I had them film the first one, and I asked Tom to edit it together, and I used that scene and looked at his performance to then build how he, I was going to um, structure the, ch the chain of his illness. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So as I mentioned earlier, there are so many themes um, in this series, and I want to get to this, really good ones. And another theme that is undeniable is race. Mm -hmm. um, and so Arsema, let me ask you about the, the plot here. So when Queen Charlotte um, shows up and she enters your world, mm. um, can you talk about how that affects your character's life and standing in society? And I ask this because 
even though we know it's fiction, mm -hmm. I held my breath because, you know, when you factor in race and, and class, you can only imagine for her character, you know, seeing Charlotte come in, this black queen, mm -hmm. how that would have rocked her world. I mean, can you talk, tell, tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the moment that Charlotte walks into the church, possibility becomes real for Agatha. Mm. And then it's quickly met by like trepidation. Mm -hmm. Why is this happening? Mm. You know, she's just been given a title that is uh, unprecedented. She's been invited to something she's never been invited for. No one like her has ever been. And there's this beautiful moment when, cause Charlotte represents both the manipulation by the House of Lords, mm -hmm. but also what could happen if all of us liberate ourselves with her as, as our face, as mm -hmm. our leader. And so for, for Agatha, she's been in this place of complacency, you know, essentially surrendering to the, to the norms um, uh, that, are, that are rocking London at the time. Uh, and Charlotte is the catalyst for, for Agatha stepping into her covenants, for her recognizing that some things could be different if we allowed them to be. Mm -hmm. um, and it becomes this beautiful thing of using the great experiment to our advantage. Mm. Talk, yeah, the great experiment, that phrase. I can't remember what you've seen so far, so I'm like, okay, have you seen the great experiment? Um, but it's, Queen Charlotte is set against the backdrop of something called the great experiment, uh, which begins with Charlotte's arrival in, in, in England. Tell us about this, this great experiment, what it is and what the show is saying about race and, and class and royalty through it. I mean, for me, the show is really talking about what happens when the other becomes part of you or the part of you becomes other. It's very interesting to me to watch Charlotte come into this world because in her world, she's a princess, right? Mm -hmm. She's always been treated wonderfully. She's never encountered any sort of issues, really. And Agatha sees her walk in, and it's very clear to Agatha that this is going to be dangerous in some way. Like, I love that moment. And we talked about this earlier, really about it sort of feeling like the nod, that moment where she goes to her and says, like, I will be here if you need me. I will come. Mm -hmm. And it's that moment of she knows the dangers that are there. and. Queen Charlotte does not yet know or understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so to me, like that, getting to explore that, and with Lord Danbury, one of my favorite things, um, you, you see him in the first episode, and he seems kind of like a jerk, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of. But, but Agatha's married to this man, and even though she does not have to like him or love him as her husband, she loves him as a black man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a tenderness there for him mm -hmm. that's really powerful. And you get to think about what he's lost mm -hmm. and what he hasn't been able to achieve because of the standards and, that are going on. So she's giving that to them. It comes through. Well, I, was about, I don't want to give anything away, but it comes through in your, in, in your relationship. Um, and so talk to me, too, about the friendship that we see between Queen Charlotte and Lady Danbury. And, and the importance of the character's friendship. India, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, I think um, it's a lot more important than a, a regular friendship. Um, not only does um, Agatha empower Charlotte and reaffirm her stance in society, but through that, as our summer has said, um, basically catapults a segregated society together. Mm -hmm. So their, their friendship is not only between the two of them, it, 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 means, it means that society then can move forward. Mm. Um, but also in the show, I think what's great is that we explore so many different types of love, as you said at the beginning, um, romantic, self-love and platonic, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and also between two black women who are understand each other without even having to speak, mm -hmm. um, which is a universal experience many um, of us will, will experience. Being in a room and you see the only other black person there and it's just a, an understanding of, I know exactly what you're feeling, mm -hmm. I know I'm feeling it too, and that's just, that's it. And it's that person that you immediately can, can relate to and you're drawn to without even having a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what's really beautiful. And they, they both not use each other because I think that's indifferent and yeah. the wrong kind of vocabulary to use there. But they both 
can, yeah, they, they, they use each other's power in order to empower themselves and to be kind of the figures of change. I love that. And it makes you imagine or want to imagine what it would have been like. Mm -hmm. This could have been possible and the mind, the mind floats in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Were there any challenges, um, and I guess, you know, Shonda or Betsy, you guys can <clears throat> speak to this, in, in bringing Charlotte's history to life? For me, I mean, I don't feel like there were challenges in that way. I gave myself permission to be very clear that we were making the story of Queen Charlotte from Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. The woman that we knew from Bridgerton, we were telling her story. And while I was using elements from the real history, I was not trying to tell the actual Queen Charlotte story. Mm -hmm. That would have been, you know, a docu-series and I would have been paying much closer attention and I had a, I had a story I needed to tell mm. based on the characters that we already had. Mm. Any of you guys can jump in on this one. So we talked about the wigs, the wardrobe, and just all of it in general. Mm. It's all such an integral part of your character. What does it feel like when you guys are all together in those rooms? I long to hear like Beyonce on strings and learn how to do one of those dances. <laughs> I'm like, how come we don't dance like that anymore? <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do this. I want to like someone to grab my hand and be regal. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, but what is that like? I mean, in the midst of all of that, what does that feel like for you guys? Since we'll never know. But <laughs> <laughs> just to be in the midst of a scene that's so magical and powerful, it's like, it looks like a wonderland, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. When yeah, you're in yeah, those scenes. Well, I, I feel kind of, a, a kind of out of it because these guys work together mm. and I, my character never kind of came into their world. Only mm. the four of us. Uh, the two Georges and two Queen Charlottes at the end, um, there's a scene in six. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get that away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like... <laughs> 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 um, so, but, yes, um, but going to what you were saying... Yes, what's it like when you're... <laughs> coming back to what you were saying... When you're all together, I guess for you guys... These then, guys can yes. speak and answer to your question. <laughs> what is it we like? Do, uh, <laughs> uh, these guys work... Uh, diligently with our choreographer yeah. Jack, amazing. Jack, Jack Murphy yeah. who yeah. Uh, choreographs all the dances Jack is amazing. Yeah. does amazing they learn classically all the proper steps I do a thing uh, on, on my sets whenever we do those things I usually will do the last take or we do sort of an improvised take where we'll put on Beyonce really and just let the dancers go and then they suddenly break into you know, current day yeah. dance, and they have fun, and they yeah. kind of let it out. Wait, that's so amazing. There's yeah, some so. film there that we're probably never going to show anybody. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. I was just about to say, you know how they have I like... Said, a, I said, Shonda, I said, watch the dailies for today, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all just, they're doing like a line dance, and they're really? doing all... Yeah. yeah. I feel Louis like they should do like a Bridgerton extras. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See? Queen Charlotte. Oh, Queen Charlotte. Queen. Oh, there you go. Queen, Queen Charlotte extras. Yes. There you yes. go. Yes. A, a, a bonus of that. We do them um, <laughs> yeah. So, Golda, let me ask you, talk to me about, as we turn the corner here, because I want to get to your questions, um, the fan reaction to all of this. How has it been for you? Amazing. Um, right from day one, you know, we were told, we were especially told about the Brazilian fans for Bridgerton, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who were very strong and dedicated to the Julia Quinn books. Yep. Ah. Um, they have loved us and greeted us with open arms, and that's fantastic. But continuing on from that, you know, uh, worldwide, globally, it's been, yeah, a really, really beautiful space to be in. Going in, did you have any idea what this would be? None whatsoever. As far as we were concerned, I mean, we're going back, back to Bridgerton, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. We were just making a little movie about a mother who had eight children. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> or, or a series, I should say. Wow. You know, it was kind of that feeling of something really small and intimate and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, about the, family and sisterhood and all of those all things. All the things. But then, yeah. The beautiful part to me is I feel like sometimes art can speak to us in a way that just words can't yeah. or speech <clears throat> can't or politics can't. And you check so many boxes yeah. in this one. So I'd love to hear from each of you um, what you hope fans will take away from this particular series. You want to start, Tom? Uh, that's why I'm on the end now. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, this is my problem, so go ahead. Oh, what will they take away? What do you uh, want I them think, to take um, away? Well, that's loaded because there, there's a lot. I mean, obviously, we, we want to enjoy and we want to spark interest, uh, as it did with me in history. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I think taking this journey in a visually, clearly, a different time period, uh, but merging kind of what we all can go through and identify with in, in today's day and age is the challenge that we have as, as filmmakers to 
to make that accessible and make people be able to identify and say, I recognize that, I recognize this. Uh, but to take away, I think um, it's tough if you marry into royalty, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How timely. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't go. <laughs> Was I don't even think you meant that. It That's why I started No, he was sitting, sitting there and you had That's to funny. do it. Betsy, what do you want us to take away from this series? Uh, you know, it's so, so much for me. I think that, that, it's in, that anything is possible. And I think that you can actually affect an amazing and incredible change <coughs> as a person, as a woman, if you're able to find men, women, and everybody. Um, if you're able to find the power inside of you. Mm. And if you have people around you or a person around you who sees that, and that even though there are sacrifices to be made for duty, mm -hmm. and there are sacrifices to be made along the way, you can transcend. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something incredibly <coughs> powerful to me about that, mm -hmm. that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. All right, my friend, what do you want us to take away? After Hit it. that. <laughs> do that. Um, do or even just from your role and, you know, from yeah. what you've been able to experience. You know, I, like, empathy has been a big part of this whole thing. I think there's something really powerful about a prequel, which means that it gets to dive into a story that you already know and show you that you can know more. Mm. And I think diving into <laughs> the story of, and stories of, three of the mothers of this show, it made me look at my own mother mm -hmm. and my own grandmother and my aunts in a very different way. Like it makes me want to ask them questions about how, what it was like for them to be in a different world than me mm -hmm. and be in a very similar body mm -hmm. to me. Um, I think, it, I hope that people are able to go away and ask all of the older femmes in their life about their life. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, look, we got six episodes, you know? Yeah. Imagine the content mm -hmm. of the women and, and all of the femme people in your life and what they have to share. Mm -hmm. Yes, so good. Your turn, Corey. <laughs> um, I mean, Let I Let me get... ask you again? No, 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 no. Um, I think, you know, what you were saying backstage is, you know, I, I, it would be really lovely if people went and um, found the characters so interesting that they wanted to know what actually happened. Yeah, I did. Um, mm -hmm. Is that what you were going to say? I was Googling cures. Oh. Like, I'm trying to help you. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Just post it back in time. I was like, time. it's his diet. <laughs> <laughs> it's his diet. <laughs> Don't give him that slop. <laughs> it's not the porridge. Porridge. Um, yeah, exactly. Oatmeal. Sorry. Uh, um, Cold, okay. Oh. Uh, I'm so sorry I took You're your not, answer. You're not, but please I'm not go sorry ahead. at all. <laughs> we come as a pair. He's answering yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah, oh, That's cute. We. we. <laughs> Chemistry's not that good. No. no. Please go. No, I was done. Oh, that was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yes, hey, hey, Charlotte, what would you like turn. us to say? Oh, dear. Um, I would like people to take uh -huh. the show... Um, a different perception of beauty, um, which mm -hmm. the show made me question my own beauty and what I, what I, my depiction of beauty, um, not in the physical sense, but in many different forms. Mm. Um, you know, that is, I think the, the term it's, is skin deep doesn't even quantify what, you know, what inner beauty is and, 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 and finding inner peace and finding yourself and being comfortable in yourself is like one of the most beautiful things you can have and that you have control of mm. um and i i think yeah it would it would be really lovely especially also in the physical sense for so many especially young black girls oh. to see them you know to see themselves represented in a way that they probably have never been please i'm um, 45 that fro i'm like my grandmother would have been like are you gonna comb your hair yeah, yeah. <laughs> no seriously you gonna put you gonna go in a room like that comb that hair before yeah. you go in there you know yeah. and it's was out of love, but it's just we had never, we've never, I told China, we've just never seen it. But, you know? but Euro, Eurocentricity, or mm -hmm. the, the Eurocentric beauty standard is not the only standard of beauty. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I will continue to push that. And I think we all should. Yeah. 
queen. Um, I will extend from uh, India's um, beautiful example there and say, you are seen, 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 all peoples are seen. Mm. Mm. Do, do you guys know these folks or did you just come with crowns on? <laughs> <laughs> well, we always have our crowns on. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay I like that. Okay. I love that. For me, what the show, I hope the show does, and I hope people take away from it, is that you know, we're writing into history that which has been erased. Mm. And trying so hard to make sure that we are showing, reflecting, and celebrating um, black hair, black beauty, black intellect, black love, so that we are really bringing a full circle experience to that. And I hope that everybody's experience of this, you know, the experience of watching King George, the experience of watching um, Queen Charlotte or, or Lady Danbury, all of those experiences are just a sort of universal experience for how we deal with pain. You know, mental illness, which King George may or may not have had, was erased as well. So this idea that we are bringing that all to the forefront is important. Mm. It's so good. Thank you. Shonda, I want to get to these audience questions. Have you given yourself a moment to really feel, I don't know, what you've been able to put out into the world? With this show, no. I mean, I think I've been excited about it and I've wanted everybody else to see it. And I think I've wanted everyone's reaction. And then this morning I woke up panicked. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad it's out there. I'm glad people get to have their own reactions and to decide what the show is for themselves. You woke up panicked and I, I walked away feeling seen. Oh, mm. really beautiful. Uh, okay. All right, so now we have some of your questions. This first one is from Susan Van Brackle. Susan, are you here? Oh, there yes. 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 Our queen. Susan, stand up. She's got her she, yeah. a permanent yeah. crown. Come on. So let her go. Yes. Yes. I love the way. I love that. So Susan has been a member since 2018. They wanted me to put that there. Um, your, her question is for Shonda. Have you ever considered bringing the Bridgerton story to a Broadway play like Hamilton or to the silver screen as a movie? Wow. wow. Good question. Um, well, I think that television is just as powerful as movies. So for me, no, for the, for the movie part. But I think it would make an amazing musical. I mean, I think about this all the time. But I also think a lot of things would make amazing musicals because I love musicals. Wait, that just gave me the chills. That, that has to happen. <laughs> let's, let's all remember this moment. And when it's on Broadway, we're going to put you right back up yeah. front with the crown. Oh, yeah. OK, so this next one is from Liza Yee. Um, who's a patron member. She says this is for any of you guys. First question, how do you prepare and get into character for the show? And does anybody have like any favorite music? Do you have like, hype music or how do you get into character? I learned my lines to Indy Really? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I didn't know that. In, in what way? Well, I'm dyslexic. Oh. So my way in is probably a little bit different to other people and that's my way in to this character. I, any kind of character, I try and find something that's going to help me to remember those lines. Wow. And for some reason, Charlotte likes India Ari. <laughs> India Ari. <laughs> like, I can see the vibe. Anybody else have a way that they prepare or get into character? You have quite a ritualistic. You do? Right? Oh, no, you it's, share, it's, Corey. It's, it's, what do you do? It's just, it's she just outs people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to That's spread the love. I'm trying to spread the love. No, it's, it's because Corey works in such a, like, meticulous way. It's very beautiful to it's watch. It's clearly effective, so, yeah, oh, do share. Oh, come on now. Um, thank you, uh, and thank you. It's all right. <laughs> I just, no, I get it's, it'd be so boring to talk about it all, but I guess it, it's, it ends with one particular piece of music, and, and George wears a uh, signet ring, which I got to keep. Ooh. Um, <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> but yeah, so at the end of everything, you know, it's, it's a long process of months, but then like every day, it's like a few things for about half an hour or whatever, and then and then music, and then what's and the then music? Uh, it, well, it's actually a soundtrack from. Uh, from, a, from another show, so I won't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. <laughs> like Eminem. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is another good question. If you could switch characters, who would you play and why? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so you were going to say something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uno reverse. Got roped into that one, didn't I? Yeah. Um, I I think I would love to play Lady Agatha Danbury. Really? Yeah. yeah. Because That'd be fun at a party. Y'all can switch. Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I mean, I'm very happy playing Charlotte. Oh no. <laughs> That's so funny. No, they get it. Um, That's cute. Just because of you know the the catalyst for change mm. and the power that that she she has and the the kind of mold that she is and bringing all of it together is such an important role oh. um and yeah i think the 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 adventures that you go on and that she goes on are, are incredible mm. um so yeah What's good? as a fan i'm like oh, wow. <laughs> this is a good question anybody remember any fun shenanigans on set that you can tell us any fun <laughs> moment they can't talk about that okay <laughs> <laughs> It's like having the teacher, and she's like, ah, ah, ah. Um, okay, this one, this is good to anyone. This is from Mark Prince, a 10-year patron. Mark? There's Mark. Hey! What part of your character is the most similar and opposite to your own personalities? Mm. These are great questions. Anybody wow. want to come to the Today Show? <laughs> <laughs> Any of you can jump in. It's a good I, question. I think for... Agatha, it's so strange. I was talking to Golda and I was like, ooh, the difference between Agatha and Arsama is getting a little bit mm, oh, yeah, yeah. gray. Um, but I think for her, the, like she has this underlying need for justice. Like the reason she fights is not for her, it's for like everyone. Mm. And the fact that she finds that so fulfilling is something that I was able to like recognize was the thing that has been giving me angst a lot mm. in this like political climate i'm sitting here feeling like i want to do something and to be a character that does something i was able to channel a lot of that like frustration um and anger and the thing that is most different different is probably she is really kind mm. like i <laughs> 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 like, there was a part where in the beginning I was like, I would not have been in this marriage for that long. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said something, I would have, <laughs> you know? And so, like, the fact that she is this generous person and she does do that thing of, like, I love him because of, like, I love him for, for a black man, you mm -hmm. know? I, I, I cherish him for the struggles that he has gone through. Mm -hmm. That is something that takes so much maturity mm. that I have yet to kind of garner. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> well, sure, you'll tell him, you know, he's worthy, and then he would insult you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. So I would skip the worthy part, and I'm like, so what are you going to say now? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Corey, what about you? Maybe parts of your character that are similar and opposite to your own personality. Yeah. Um, uh, I... Actually, I, I mean, that's actually one of the things that I started with. I mean, at, at school we were taught, like, uh, at drama school, sorry, we were taught there's, there should be a list of, like, things that are what, what's most similar and what's most different, so you can lean into the things that are most different. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember saying, uh, you know, when I'm uncomfortable or when I'm feeling anxious, I, I get really obsessive about something. And for me, that's football or table tennis with uh, Freddie, who plays Reynolds, um, or whatever, whatever it is, something physical or nerdy or history or, you know, whatever it is. And for George, that is farming or astronomy or science or study. Um, so I think that's quite a, you know, like we share that. And I think the, the other thing is that I'm, I'm quite, I think I'm quite an open person. Um, and she's not in. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm quite communicative, I think. And, and, and George will go to any length to uh, to keep a barrier up mm. um, and so that was it w yeah that was a lot of work at the beginning before we started shooting was mm -hmm. understanding exactly why that is where that's been learnt and how that expresses itself it's really interesting mm. India similarities and then differences to your character similarities um, trying to navigate life yeah. Um, I'm 21, so I'm still... Ooh. You know what's so funny? Everybody goes, aww. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's cute. So I still feel like I'm discovering who I am, mm -hmm. where I fit, um, what I like doing. Um, so that element of everything being very new is very easy for me to kind of relate to. Mm -hmm. Differences. Um, she's incredibly competent at asking questions and being inquisitive um, and um, going against the grain but not trying you know not not tr not trying to do it to kind of show oh look I'm being different but just being very happy with being very yeah I didn't yeah I guess I guess she's she's just incredibly clever and um, inquisitive mm. and I feel like I am sometimes but I can be quite apologetic about that don't know if it's because we're British and we're always a bit like sorry um, <laughs> but it's it's that thing of oh I, I don't want to ask questions to hurt people whereas yeah. she'll just be up front and be like why have you put me in this carriage mm. um, which I don't have and I, I definitely didn't have it 17 mm. um, so yeah you think you would channel a little bit more of that now now that you've played absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and not being afraid to ask questions. And yeah, because that, that's how we learn. Yeah. I, I think if, if, we're, if we're not questioning ourselves every day or we're not challenging our own biases, we're never going to grow. Um, and I would hate to be stuck with the same mentality um, forever. And mm. who I am, as I said, a couple minutes ago now yeah. who, I, who I who I am last week is different to the person that I am now and and I hope that continues absolutely I love that yes. oh I can't wait to hear what you say <laughs> <laughs> it's I've been with this character for quite some time now so we are a, one in a weird way but yet she's created she has created her own persona mm -hmm. so she's set put to me in that way mm -hmm. but there is a moment i often stand there and shake her hand she like she's formed in front of me mm. um yeah i find her very generous and, and i'm quite generous and very caring and you know supportive her <laughs> badassness mm -hmm. sometimes i i can't reach for that mm. in my own life mm -hmm. but we are one now Mm. And I feel very privileged to be a part of her and her a part of me. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's good. That's all of your questions. This has been phenomenal. Anything else you want to add before you leave us? You guys, Thanks for watching. Thank you. Yeah, we yeah. love yeah. you. Yeah. So, so great. You, you know, she was on the Today Show. I know, you know, they've been, you know, all over. I heard you guys were at the Smithsonian. I mean, they've been doing so much. So I know you guys have been really busy, but I hope you can just take a moment, even if it's right now, to really, to feel what they're giving you. You guys, go. You can go home now. Turn on Netflix and watch the rest. Of it. Yes. Yes. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you.